Now, there's been a lot of talk in the last couple of days about an appearance of Elon Musk at the recent UFC event in New York, where he entered the building alongside Donald Trump and was wearing a rather strange symbol around his neck. With some on the internet speculating, what exactly does this strange symbol mean? Now, this video is not meant to make any direct accusations against anyone, uh, but rather to discuss false philosophies and beliefs which have the danger of deceiving many well-meaning people and even some Christians. Now, I'm not a prophet, I'm not a pastor, I'm just simply here as a Christian journalist making a commentary on social trajectories and agendas. And as the Bible says, to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now, this symbol is rather strange. I think you'll agree. It's not the a symbol that you see very often being worn around someone's neck. It consists of the all-seeing eye, which you might recognize, and the omega symbol. That horseshoe type shape is actually the omega symbol. So what is Omega? Omega is the last letter of the Greek alphabet, which has caused some people online uh, in the media to speculate about whether this is a reference to the end or to the great end, uh, which the symbol can sometimes be known for because it's that last letter of the Greek alphabet. And for example, you may know that Jesus is referred to as the Alpha and the Omega which is the first and last letter of the Greek alphabet. So the Omega symbol is a reference to the end or the last. Now, funnily enough, that also links to X. How do you get from the last letter of the Greek alphabet, which is Omega, to X, to the term X? Well, the last letter of the ancient Hebrew alphabet is X. It's an X symbol. It's Tav. So, that Omega symbol being worn in that necklace is essentially, if you transfer it to ancient Hebrew, is actually X, which is kind of ironic. They're both the last letters of those ancient alphabets. So, that is also linked to X, as in the last letter. So, the Omega and the X. But I'm going to touch more on that in a moment, and you may be quite surprised at some of these concerning ideas and philosophies that appear to be behind some of these elements. But, but let's look at the symbol as a whole for a second. The symbol in this necklace, very similar to what is called the Omega Point. As you'll see here, here's some examples with the Omega symbol and with the the eye, the pyramid, um, and those things together. Now, what is the Omega Point symbol? What does that symbolize? If you've never heard of that before, please listen to this, because this will reveal to you some of the concerning things behind this false philosophy, which is represented by the Omega Point, and in my eyes, directly relates to the ideas being put forward by Elon Musk. Now, if you've never heard of it before, the Omega Point theory was coined by a Jesuit. Surprise, surprise. Jesuit order, secret society that was set up to oppose the, the Protestant Reformation. So it's very anti-gospel and in those ways anti-Christ. And Pope Francis is the first Jesuit Pope. But if you've ever seen my videos before, you may have heard me mention this guy as he was dubbed the father of transhumanism. His name was Telhard de Chardin, and he also coined the Omega Point Theory, represented by this type of symbol. And his philosophies appear to be very influential on the agendas that we see unfolding in this world today. The idea that mankind could reach a so-called next stage in human evolution, which of course is quite central to the doctrine of transhumanism, of reaching that next stage of human evolution. So he believed in that and also he taught the singularity of mankind 
reaching this point in human history, now through technology. This is the belief system that he coined and he was influential in what we see seemingly the same ideas in, in what some of Elon Musk's companies are putting forward. You know, this idea that humanity is evolving, that we can use technology to flourish, to reach the next stage in human evolution, that we can reach this point of a one singularity, one consciousness of humankind, and like this humanistic utopia where we reap the benefits of technology, where we can cheat death and we can cheat disease and we can play God and we can reach this point in human history where we basically replicate the Garden of Eden and take that bite of the fruit again and take the mark of the beast and rise up in defiance of God and build our, our own human Tower of Babel. Now the idea of these brain chips and everything, you can see the huge investments being put in by investors, billions and billions and billions of dollars for the future of this brain chip technology. Just briefly, the Amiga point, because this is important because it really helps you to understand these imaginations that elevate themselves against the word of God and what is behind this. It says the Amiga point is a theorized future event in which the entirety of the universe spirals toward a final point of unification. The term was invented by the French Jesuit Catholic priest, Telhard de Chardin. He argued that the Amiga point resembles the Christian Logos, namely Christ, who draws all things into himself, who in the words of the Nicene Creed is God from God, light from light, true God from true God, and through him all things were made. The Antichrist spirit mimics and mirrors and copies Jesus all the time. And by that we can see that this deception is trying to replace Christ and be like God. Now I just want to read this here. This is from an official paper. We humans are getting closer to the point, particularly with the aid of computers and related technology. The Amiga point is the final step before singularity takes place. Once we achieve or cross into singularity, which will be the first and truly major evolutionary step in mankind, we cease to be humans. In the near future, computers will surpass our collective intellect and on the only way to maintain our place in the universe will be to merge with them. That's exactly what's going on. That's exactly what some of these figureheads um, are pushing in this society today, don't you agree? When transhumanists speak about the Amiga point, they refer to the point when our use of science and technology will improve our human state, making conditions such as disability, suffering, disease, aging, and even death a thing of the past. How's that for a counterfeit gospel? How's that for a false Christ gospel? That is exactly it right there, like trying to play God and create a gospel of the Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist trying to mimic and counterfeit and deceive people to think that they can do this and merge with this singularity, like a counterfeit of the body of Christ, maybe a singularity of the beast, so that they can merge with this, this one consciousness, uh, using technology too, it says in there at least, that's not a prophecy, but it says it there, in order to achieve what the gospel promises through a counterfeit means. And just further back in, in, in this article, in this paper, it also says about how we're getting to this point uh, with our consciousness. Each person will become like the center of his or her own universe. And that's what they believe we're shifting into, that each person becoming a center of their own universe. So that's, that. I mean, that is like, be your own God. It's the lie from the Garden of Eden. So that's what I wanted to show you in terms of the Amiga point and the philosophy behind it. Sounds very similar to the ideas and the agendas that are being pushed through these companies. But let me just show you lastly, and we touched on this a few months ago where I did a video on this symbol in terms of ancient Hebrew and Greek.
the real Jesus Christ is the Alpha and the Omega, which is the first and the last, the beginning and the end, and it may not be a coincidence, but the symbol that Elon Musk has got around his neck in that necklace at least, is the Omega symbol, which ironically correlates to the fact that the last letter of the, the ancient Hebrew alphabet is X. So the last letter of the Greek alphabet is Omega, and the last letter of the ancient Hebrew pictograph language is X. Which is interesting because that is the, you know, the term that is being used for all these companies that are pushing the Neuralink idea of brain chips. So what does X mean? X in ancient Hebrew pictograph was a mark, was a covenant, and was a sign. X in the ancient Hebrew pictograph was a mark, was a covenant, and was a sign. That's the ancient language that's several thousand years old. So in terms of Jesus Christ, who is the center of all truth, Jesus died on the cross. Jesus died on the cross. The cross symbol, the X which is, in the ancient Hebrew, it represents a mark, a covenant, and a sign. Jesus made the new covenant with us, and as a sign that he was the Messiah, he died on that cross, and he was marked by our transgressions. He, he carried our burdens and paid for our sins and transgressions on the cross. You know, he, he bore the curse for our sin. So Jesus is the truth, and that is, I believe, why he died on the cross. And that symbol, several thousand years before Jesus died on that cross, or before crucifixion was even invented, there was already that symbol in the ancient Hebrew pictograph of, of that cross, which was a mark, a covenant, and a sign. So how is that relevant to this? Well, as we said before, copied, paralleled, and mimicked by the Antichrist. So... What does the Antichrist bring? What does the beast bring? What, what happens in the book of Revelation at the end of time? There is a mark of the beast, certainly in its physical form. There's a mark of the beast, which is a counterfeit mark, covenant, and sign. You know, the, the people are branded by the beast. They're marked by the beast. They enter into a covenant. The Antichrist bring, brings a false covenant, false peace covenant. And these people become one in the singularity or in the body of the beast, so to speak, symbolically, and they enter into that covenant where there is no redemption after it. And the Antichrist also brings the lying signs and wonders. So this is the counterfeit, right? You know, Jesus is the true covenant, the new covenant, true sign from God, the true Messiah, God in the flesh. And if you're marked by him, by Jesus Christ, sealed by God, you will go to heaven. And if you take the counterfeit and you're marked by the beast, you will go to hell for eternity and you will be sealed into hell. So it's like that first and last perversion, as I said, at the beginning in Eden, there was the, the fruit, the forbidden fruit that Adam and Eve took, rebelled against God, entered into sin and death came. And then at the end of time, it seems that there's this other great te temptation that comes upon the world in which there's a second great deception of sorts, a great temptation to take this mark of the beast. And if people take that, there will be no redemption afterwards. Now, you think about what we read about technology, the uh, so-called next stage in human evolution, how all of this seems to tie together. Uh, this idea of this Omega point that they think they're reaching where the world can become one in defiance and rebellion of God. Am I saying that Elon Musk is the Antichrist or am I, am I saying any of these people are? I would never make such an accusation. I would never publicly state such a thing. These things have not been revealed. And it's totally wrong to throw those kinds of definitive accusations without it being revealed in public so i'm not a prophet ultimately i'm looking forward to the return of jesus and that is my hope but what i'm saying is that the social trajectory um, of this world 
is heading towards these prophecies and the season of time that the Bible talks about. Now I don't know the future exactly other than what I read in the Bible, but I do believe that these things are coming. What we read in the Bible is coming. I don't know the exact way that that will happen. The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. His Messiah, who is Jesus the Christ, who is the Logos, who is the Word made flesh, he is the only solution. He's the only solution to receive a new glorified body, uh, to have forgiveness for all your sins, to escape the wrath of God for our transgressions. He's the only way to inherit eternal life. He's the only one that will give you that new body that will never suffer, never have disease, never die. He's the only way to have the curse broken, the curse from Adam, the curse from the Garden of Eden, the curse for all of our transgressions, the punishment that we deserve and the judgment we deserve. He took that upon himself on the cross at Calvary and then rose again three days later from death. He's the only solution, folks. None of these people are the solution. I hope that they all come to the knowledge of the gospel. I hope they all get saved. I hope they find the truth. But at the moment, some of these people are pushing forward agendas, knowingly or unknowingly, in ways that are completely rebel going, going against God and, you know, towards the agenda of the spirit of Antichrist. So I hope that anyone who sees this will, will wake up and see the truth. Um, that they should be very discerning and very concerned by these trajectories, which essentially leads back, as I showed here, to the philosophy of a Jesuit. So thank you all for listening, and I hope that helps. Take care.